everybody, Ron Bielefeld, Whistling Wings Photography, here with another video. Canon R3, my 600 F4, but even though it looks, hey, some of you have watched some of my videos, I hope, even though this lens looks a lot like my old EF 600 F4 Mark II, it is not. It is the new RF. 600 f4 yes i sold my trusty ef mark ii that i've had since it came out basically since that lens was available and i got the rf 600. why did i do that i loved my 600 ef mark ii and it, it did a great job adapted to my R3 and my R5. So much so that I thought, I'm sticking with my EF Mark II until I had a chance to play around with the RF 600 more than I had up to this point recently. And I noticed that maybe there's more to it than just the weight reduction, which was quite substantial, over two pounds. This lens is over two pounds less than my EF600, but this video is about the performance of this lens on the R3. I was gonna do an R3 and R5 video combined the performance of this lens on both those cameras, but I'm gonna do a separate R5 video with this lens because there are some distinct differences in certain things that I wanna cover more than I can if I do a combo video. So this one's gonna be the 600 RF on the R3, but it's not going to be an overall look at this, and it's not going to be just this lens on the R3. I want to talk about the autofocus performance, how quick and snappy it is on the R3, but not just the naked lens on the R3. You can see what I have on here. This is the two times teleconverter. I want to talk about how good this lens is, the autofocus system, the image quality, the stabilization, how good this lens is on the R3, even with the two times teleconverter on it. If it's as good as I think you're going to see and you're going to agree with me how good it is with the two times on it, imagine what it does with 1.4 and without any teleconverter on it at all when it comes to autofocus speed stability availability with the IBIS and the IS and then overall image quality even with the two times. So that's what this video is going to concentrate on. I'm going to go out and I'm going to demonstrate how quick and snappy and accurate the autofocus system is, how good the stabilization is. And then we're going to come back inside and I'm going to go through, we're going to, I'm going to show some images taken with this lens, of course, with the two times on it, on the R3 from my tours and from my field shoots to show you how good the image quality is with the two times on there. So if you're interested in seeing, hearing some of this, stay tuned. So we're outside and I've got some birds in a bush over here. It's an orange and reddish kind of bird. Can't really tell it's a bird. It's a fuzzy blob right now. But we're talking about the speed of the RF 600 F4 with the two times teleconverter on the Canon R3. Purpose of this is to show you how quick this autofocus is and how stable, I'm trying to handhold here, how stable because I'm looking at my Ninja 5, so it's, it's kind of hard, how stable it is with the IS and IBIS, even with the two times teleconverter on it. And comparing that, now I'm not gonna, I don't have any direct comparisons with the EF 600 Mark II that I shot forever and ever and ever, and I thought, 
adapted extremely well to the Canon R5 and the R3, and it really does, but the difference in performance, autofocus quickness, image stabilization, the difference between the EF600 Mark II and this RF600 is more than I ever imagined, and I'm glad I made the change. And man, the communication improvement that you get with this lens to the R cameras, in this case the R3, improves the image stabilization and it improves the speed of the autofocus immensely, more than I ever thought. And what I'm showing today is the extreme. With the two times teleconverter on it, it's still extraordinarily fast and punchy. And that's what I want to show you here. So we're going to go ahead. This bird is way out of focus. And on your mark, get set, go. Just that quick. I mean, that's pretty, there's no, there's no real searching there and there's no slow cycling of the lens. It goes fast and that's not set to full. So we have full range of focus here, full range of travel, which can even slow things down even more, especially if it has to search. Move over to this bird, boom. You want eye detect, boom. Really fast. Come over here, we'll <clears throat> get it out of focus again. There's a palm tree that's really close. Let's get it on the fence, way back on the fence. Come all the way back over to our bird if I can find it. It's here somewhere, there it is, and here we go. Eye detect, track, over to this bird. We'll just use eye detect right away here, boom. Come back over here, eye detect, boom. Get off on the fence over here again. Oh, heck, let's go the other direction. Get out of focus over here on something. Fence. Come back over to the bluebird. Our, well, it's a bluebird, it isn't a bluebird. What is it? It's an Azuli bunting, way out of focus. On your mark, get set, boom, that fast. I mean, that is really fast with a two times teleconverter on it. Come down to our other bird. Go right to eye detect, bam. If you can see the eye, if you can recognize the eye, it works to eye detect, works really well, even if it's way out of focus. Now, if it's just a fuzzy blob, this is a whole other topic that we've talked about before. It may not find the eye, it may go somewhere else. So you use something else like spot if something's way out of focus. That's why I'm not using eye detect right off the bat. And I think that's a problem a lot of people have is they do. They try to use eye detect when, okay, we'll get off topic for a second. Come back over to this bird. You try to use eye detect right now. The autofocus is, it can't see an eye. There's no eye discernible there. So it may or may not work. So instead of doing that, I usually use spot or center autofocus point like this. And if you do that, boom, finds the bird, no problem. Now it finds the eye. But if it's way out of focus, but if it's not quite, you know, not too bad out of focus, let's go a little bit more out of focus than that. Let's come back. can't find the bird, there it is. See, now you can see an eye there. So if you go right to eye detect, boom, it finds it. You could, you could discern an eye, even though it was way out of focus. But if it's just a fuzzy blob, don't try eye detect first. Try spot first or center point. To get the bird in focus, at least close, and then go with it. But anyway, we're off topic here. Still could see how fast it was though. And that's the point, it's how quick this is. If we go over here to our bluebird one more time, I'll use eye detect now, boom, that quick and accurate and steady with IS and IBIS. And this is on one, IS mode one, of course. So anyway, that's the point I'm trying to make here. And now we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna show you some actual images from my tours and field shoots to show you the image quality you can get 
shooting the two times teleconverter on the RF 600. I'm not even going to show you images or talk about the 1.4 times teleconverter because if it's this good with the two times, you know it's at least as good, if not better, with the 1.4 times teleconverter, and it is a little bit better. Are you going to lose some image quality with the two times? Sure, but is it still good enough? More than good enough for getting world class images in my mind? To me, yes, it is, and it gets me 1200 millimeters with good stabilization and unbelievably punchy, fast response. So that's the point. So we'll head back inside. Okay, so welcome back inside. It's pouring down rain outside now, so I'm glad we did the outdoor part earlier. What I want to go into now is show you some images that were taken with the R3 with the two times teleconverter, of course the RF teleconverter, on the RF 600 F4. And these are processed images. A lot of viewers leave comments, contact me and say, listen, sh put up the raw images so we can see what they look like before processing. Yeah, I could. More work putting up the raw images and the processed images, cropped like I like them and everything else. To me, the crux of the whole thing is the images once they're processed. How good are they? These are raw images. I like to present the finished product because that's what really matters. The finished product that you can get from your raw images. So I'm just showing raw images here. Hopefully you'll agree with me that the final product coming off of this combination right here is pretty darn good to be able to shoot 1200 millimeters handheld, bird photography, perched, birds in flight. That's one thing that Canon has always been good at, even way back. Two times teleconverters on a 600 millimeter F4 was doable. It's more than doable now. The image quality coming off of uh, this combination, as I think you'll see here, is amazing. So let's take a look.
Okay, so I hope after watching those images, seeing those images, that you agree that the image quality with the two times teleconverter on the RF 600 millimeter F4, on the R3, it's pretty good. It's actually really good in my mind. And so now the flexibility that the system gives me that I've had in the past, and it was good, but this is better to shoot 1200 millimeters, 840 millimeters, 600 millimeters, two times teleconverter, 1.4 times teleconverter, no teleconverter, without even having to worry about or think about image quality, having to worry about or think about autofocus performance, stabilization performance, stuff like that. For me as a bird photographer principally, it works really, really well in my mind so that I can just shoot really the way I need to to get the birds hopefully in the frame composition wise the way I want it uh, in camera and so to me this is I mean to, to just to think about where we've come from over the last decade or so is is amazing so anyway I'm gonna wrap this up and if you liked this video please subscribe It's subscribers that keep this YouTube channel going. And look out for a similar video like this having to do with the R5 because there are some different things going on with the R5 with this combination than with the R3. One thing I want to talk about real quick before we end this video, now that we're done with the principal part of it, is talking about a limitation that this lens has compared to other RF lenses, it doesn't have a control ring. And I like to use the control ring. It's a little tip here. I use it to change my autofocus areas on the R3. Now, the cool thing is though, is that you can get the control ring functionality with this lens in the R3 by going into the autofocus menu. I think it's tab number five or menu number five and there's a menu setting there where you can take the manual focus ring and change it to the control ring functionality. And I've done that because I don't use manual focus very much, if ever, in my bird photography on a 600 millimeter lens. I use spot autofocus if I need to uh, adjust my focus uh, where, the, where the camera is focused. And so I sacrificed the manual focus ring to become the control ring. And it works really, really well for me. So just a little tip at the end here. Hey, until next time, stay safe. I hope you have great light. I hope you take great images. And I'll see you soon.